Well, hello, everybody. This is Byron King with Investor Intel. Today, we are going to speak with Stephen Bariga, who's the CEO of a uh, of a, an exploration play called Romeo's Gold, R-O-M-I-O-S Gold. It trades on the TSX Venture. It trades on the U.S. Uh, OTC. Uh, and, and Romeo's is a really interesting company because it is a treasure chest of about, uh, I don't know, six or seven different uh, exploration plays all over North America. Good morning. Well, hello, Stephen. Uh, it is great to be with you. Um, and just give, I mentioned that you've got a, a treasure chest of plays. Give us a list of, you know, the top five or so the top five, let's say, of where, where you where you control certain acreage and what have you. Uh, I mean, it's just it's just wonderful. Just give 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 us five. Sure. Hey, Byron, it's it's really good to be here, and, and thanks very much for your time today. Sure. Uh, you know, we we have we have an exceptional grouping of, of assets, as you pointed out, and mm -hmm. and when I took over as CEO uh, on Friday, I was president prior to that for the last ten months, uh, and uh, joined the team back in September. I was amazed at the company's. Uh, portfolio mm -hmm. was the main reason why I joined the team was just these assets are extraordinary and they are diverse. So, you know, we have a, a very large package of land in the Golden Triangle of British Columbia, where we have just over 400 square kilometers of claims along the southern boundary of the Galore Creek asset. So that's the GCMC team, that's Newmont and Tech. We have three uh, copper gold porphyry targets uh, in, in amongst uh, in amongst those those uh, claim blocks, and uh, one was one was drilled out back in 2010 2011. We drilled 15,000 meters there and uh, spent around 15 million dollars. Now the resource is not compliant to today's 43101 standards, so I have actually a new 3D model and a, and a new calculation being worked on currently. But we also have two non-drill tested targets that are really looking quite exciting, and one's called Trek South, and the other is JW. This is all and in the Golden Triangle. This is all in the Golden Triangle. Yeah, yes. So that's that's the summary of the of the of the BC assets. Yeah, that that, that also, alone would be a company maker, but you've got others. So just <laughs> give give right. us a rundown on some of these others. I mean, we also have a, a very large block of claims in northwestern Ontario, and that's surrounding the Muscle White Mine. So that's Newmont's Muscle White Mine, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a there's a prolific uh, greenstone belt. And we're the only two players uh, on the belt. So there's, there's, there's Newmont and there's ourselves. And again, we have a, a very large land package. We've had some great uh, drill results and some great uh, discoveries. You know, the Muscle White Mine is, uh, was developed on a BIF, on a banded iron formation model, that, that they've been producing 250,000 ounces of gold on an annual basis. I mean, it's a, it's a prolific production model. I remember, right, um, muscle, muscle white, not that you, own, you know, muscle white itself, separate from where you, but it goes back to the old homestake mining days of uh, right. the great homestake company of South Dakota. So, I mean, which was a specialist in banded iron formations. And I don't want to get all geological on the, on the audience out there, but I mean, BIFs are like the best in terms of just long lived uh, gold bearing, you know, when they have gold, it's there <clears> and you can mine it like forever. Uh, that's right. Mine. Homestake Mine, South Dakota for 125 years. You know, so, yeah. Okay. So you're right next to Muscle White. Nothing so right next to Muscle White, and we've and we've tracked that BIF for for kilometers along our our our, uh, our claim block of so, uh, Lundmark. So the banded account. iron is underneath your claims. It, it doesn't, That's correct. It doesn't we, we have the... we have literally kilometers of it, and in fact, we've identified additional uh, additional BIFs that run parallel to it. But the reality is, is that these these both Ontario and in BC, these are projects that are that are that are costly to operate. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're north northwestern Ontario is helicopter or float plane supported. The Golden Triangle is all helicopter supported. Mm -hmm. um, these are these are expensive places to operate. So as a junior of our size, I'm looking at how we can either find a, a strong partner to move some of these assets forward, mm -hmm. or else the possibility is very real that we might spin them out. We might take the one or both of those assets and create two new companies out of them. Now, and, for the benefit of the, of the viewers and watchers sure. and listeners out there, yeah. I mean, before we go to other assets that you want, yeah. but, you know, when they hear, oh, it's expensive to operate, on the next question in people's heads is, well, gee, do this company have any money? The fact is that you actually have some money, don't you? 
We there's do. Some, we're we're in a very some, fortuitous some position. DNR in, the, DNR in hand, and you've got other uh, things that are worth that are worth money. Can, tell tell us tell us what's in the bank and what's sure. uh, what's on the asset side of the of the sheet. Basically, we're looking at somewhere, where, depending on the market. Of course, the market's been tough the past couple of months. Uh, we're sitting around two and a half million, two and a half to three million dollars worth of cash and securities in, in on hand currently. Mm -hmm. So we have a very large uh, position in Enduro Metals. There, uh, there, we, there we have about eight million shares, and mm -hmm. we that's from a partnership that we or a deal we did with them on on their Newmont Lake property. They also, there was $2 million of cash that were payments that were included in that deal. So they paid the last million dollars to us in February. So we have about a million dollars in cash. We have some pretty robust securities uh, portfolio as well. So that puts me in a very fortuitous position to be able to complete our summer work programs, both in Ontario, which are now done. There's assays pending from our surface work there to the IP program that we're proposed that we're completing as we speak in BC on our Trek South target, our, our copper gold porphyry target there. All of this, all of this work has been, has been funded. It's uh, it, the money's in the bank. And then the work that we have proposed for our assets in Nevada, and I can talk to you a little bit about those assets as well, because it's going to become our primary focus. I think we're going to pivot the company uh, and really focus a lot of our energy down on Nevada. Well, because you, you before we came on the, the broadcast here, you were saying that you've got some really exciting things happening in Nevada. So I guess you can say we're perhaps we're saving some of the juiciest for now. So if anybody has <laughs> been right. watching so long, the juiciest is about to happen. So, okay, lay some juice on us here, Stephen. We have two core assets in Nevada. One's a former producing mine that was operational back in the 30s into the 40s. It's called the Scosa mine. Mm -hmm. And Scosa was actually, uh, was, was one of those assets that, that uh, brought Nevada back onto the map after the, original, the, 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 the end of their first gold rush. It was Scosa. Then the old timers found, they found uh, wire gold at surface along the main vein. And, uh, and that mine was mined for about 10 years. And, but they only went down about 400 feet. And as you know, that's, that's peanuts in the grand scheme of things. It's nothing, yeah. yeah. But the, the grade was extraordinary. They were pulling out on average an ounce per ton. Mm -hmm. That was the average. And no, some no, of it was, was so, just... sorry, some of it was so um, high, uh, it was, was, was just pulled straight out, mm -hmm. not processed and put right into the vault. Now, just for people out there who were thinking, well, you know, if this is so great, how come nobody's mining it? The history there is that when World War II came along, the government said, you know, we like gold, but we don't want to put people and resources into mining gold. So we're going to stop mining gold. We're going to build like nuclear bombs and B-29s and stuff like that. And so, so this is one of those assets that kind of closed down in the 1940s and never really picked itself back up. Is that, is that a fair statement of it, the history? I think it nailed it. It's 41 was the last year it was operational. And then from that point on, it basically laid dormant until we picked it up in 1999. So we've had it on our books for 23 years now. And uh, I'm sorry. Uh, and and it's, it's one of these things I keep on referring to it as a bar find. It's kind of like if you're if you're a car buff and you're you're looking for a, that that perfect car and perfect nick, it sits in a barn with three inches of dust on it in the middle of nowhere. I'm blowing the dust off of it because we've had some extraordinary results. We had bonanza grade uh, drill results back in 2000. We did a, a short drill program, a diamond drill program, and uh, with a high high grade of uh, 268 grams per ton. 206. That's eight and a half ounces per ton uh, over almost two meters. Uh, and uh, to go along with other really great intercepts. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to get back to SCOSA. And we're, we're actually completing a 3D model right now, which is compiling all of the historic data that we have access to, all the drill log that we have access to, to better understand and, and prep for our upcoming drill program. My hope is that we can get the drill training before the end of the year. The, there's rigs available. I know it's very tough in Nevada right now to access rigs, but October, November timeframe, most drill programs have stopped. So everyone we're talking to has said, yeah, we definitely will have uh, rigs available and it's fully permitted. We've kept the drill permit in good standing since, uh, since 99. So it's exciting. I think the SCOSA asset is something which is uh, near term potential results for us. And then we also acquired a new asset in November. It was an asset I brought to the company called Kincaid. And um, we did an original deal. It was very inexpensive for us to enter into the into the region. For we did nine claims. It cost us about fifty thousand dollars in total to pull the whole thing together. 
And then we, and that allowed us to stake an additional 100 claims around it to the north and south. And what we're finding at surface is extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. Uh, walking up and down the property with John Bixock, our VP of Exploration. And honestly, it's like a kid in the candy shop. He's never seen anything quite like it. There's old workings across the entirety of the Southern, well, probably the entire property. We just haven't spent enough time there yet to be able to speak confidently about the Northern half. But that was the reason why we originally, uh, we actually staked the Northern half because of the SCARN potential, which is very similar to the Isabella Pearl mine just east of us. But to the South, we've been finding old workings on every valley that we, that we look at through. So there's pits, there's, there's trenches, there's adits everywhere. There's former producing mines that we know about, and there's former producing mines that are not found on any map anywhere. Well, I think we're going to just wrap it up now because we could talk all day, but the, what the audience out there, they have, a, they have a life too, and people have attention spans. So uh, for all the listeners and all the viewers out there, Romeo Gold, R-O-M-I-O-S Gold, uh, they have money in the bank, so they're not raising anything anytime soon. They have super high grade projects in Nevada that they're working on right now. As we speak, they've got others in Golden Triangle of BC. They got uh, Muscle White in uh, uh, Ontario uh, that are workable, but also dealable in terms of other things. And if you haven't taken a look at Romeo's Gold, you should take a look at Romeo's Gold. Uh, great company, super low price. It's, it, is, uh, it is the perfect entry point right now uh, to, uh, to, to come in and just, and just, just sort of, you know, just kind of load up and wait for the good news that, that's coming down the tracks. Uh, Steve, we wish you well. Uh, thank you for being with us today. Uh, investor audience out there, thank you for watching and listening. We appreciate it. I really appreciate the time, Byron. Thanks so much. It's great talking with you.